Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Trixie, and I am the Associate Director here at Diversity Abroad. We're excited that you've joined us for today's webinar, co-hosted with the China Institute. During this webinar, we're excited to tell you a little bit more about each of our respective organizations and the opportunities that you have to apply for one of our $20,000 scholarships to go to the China Institute for the fall 2017 semester. So before we get started, I just wanted to share some general housekeeping tips uh, so that you know how to use the GoToWebinar portal. Uh, you have the option to raise your hand or ask questions by just clicking on certain icons within your portal. So you can go ahead and do that. And we're also recording this session. So once the webinar concludes, we'll make sure to share the recording with you and uh, with the rest of our registrants. So you'll be able to come back and listen to this recording uh, and take notes on some of the content that we've discussed. So with that, uh, you can take a look at our agenda for today's call. We're going to do a little bit of self-introductions and tell you more about our respective organizations. So I'll be talking about diversity abroad, and then Sean will be speaking about the China Institute and tell you more about what to expect when you are a student um, in that program. And then after that, we'll talk to you specifically about our scholarship. Again, we have nine $20,000 scholarships for you to apply for for the fall 2017 semester. And we're very, very excited to be able to offer that um, to you as students. So we hope that after, you know, learning more about the scholarship and the different ways that you can find additional funding, uh, that you can really recognize this as a feasible opportunity for you and that you find it um, in the time, you find the time in your schedule uh, to make this a possibility. So we're very, very excited again that you are here. Um, with that, we will kick it off with a little introduction about diversity abroad. So some of you may or may not be familiar with our organization. If this is your first time doing anything with diversity abroad, then welcome. We're very, very excited to have you. Uh, diversity Abroad is an organization that is committed to seeing more diverse and underrepresented students participating in global opportunities. So that can mean anything from studying abroad for academic credit to having um, an internship in another country to even teaching or volunteering in other countries. Um, there are so many different ways to gain global experiences, and they have endless benefits for you personally professionally and academically. So if you haven't visited our website, this is what the homepage looks like. It's www.diversityabroad.com. And you can go on and join our community, which is free. And once you've joined, you gain access not only to this scholarship, but to the others on our website. So you can apply for hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of opportunities overseas. Um, we also have unique resource guides where we pay attention to the different experiences that you might have depending on your identities. Uh, so you can check out destination guides, how-to guides, articles that students or diversity abroad staff have written. Um, all of these meant to keep you as informed as possible about the global experience process from what it is and how to start your, your journey to securing funding and uh, processing how to take your experiences abroad and help them navigate you through the next level of your careers. So that's a little bit of a glance about who we are and what we do. Um, I'm happy now to have my co-host, Sean, introduce himself and tell you all a little bit more about the China Institute. Hi, everyone. So my name is Sean McCarthy. I'm the Assistant Director of China Initiatives at the University of Dayton, which manages the uh, China Institute. So what I do is I manage the application and admission process for the China Institute. So if you're interested in one of our programs, I'll definitely be one of the people that you speak with uh, to learn more. Um, but in the meantime, what I'll do is tell you a bit about the China Institute. <coughs> Excuse me. So to start off with, there's this brief video that I'll show you. It's about 30 seconds, but it'll, I think it'll set the stage a bit for uh, what the China Institute is about and what the experience is like. What if you could travel? the past and future at the same time. A place where you question everything you know and you try everything you don't. 
where a step outside your everyday life becomes a running start for the rest of it. Because this is more than study abroad. This is study beyond. This is the China Institute, created by the University of Dayton. Okay, so I hope that that wasn't too echoey with my microphone, but um, there are a lot of different images there across China, particularly um, Suzhou, where the China Institute is located, as well as places like Shanghai, which is easily one of the largest cities in the world, if not the largest, it's about 25 million people. So just a little bit about the China Institute. It's relatively new. It's going to be five years old this August. Um, so we opened it in August of 2012. It's located in a place called Suzhou Industrial Park, which is in a, a place called Jiangsu Province. Um, and Jiangsu Province is this really successful province in China. It has a lot of history um, with arts and culture as well. Um, it's very economically prosperous as well. Um, so Suzhou Industrial Park is this really unique place um, that's only about 25 years old. And it was um, designed as a planned city. So basically, they built this city out of farmland. Um, and it's home to all these different companies and institutions uh, from around the world as well. Um, it's only about uh, 75 miles from Shanghai. So on the bullet train, it's about, I think, the uh, quote-unquote official time is 22 minutes. But it's usually about 25 to get there. So it's really close. Um, otherwise, it's about a two to two and a half hour drive, um, depending on traffic in Shanghai which with 25 million people is usually pretty bad, um, but it's still very close to a major city. Um, it's this really cool international community as well. So in Suzhou Industrial Park, there are people from all over the world. Um, so there's people from different Asian countries, um, people from Western Europe, uh, some people from South America as well, um, and then of course Americans and Canadians too. So the China Institute, um, is one of 26 international universities located in Suzhou Industrial Park. Um, other universities include uh, George Washington University. Uh, there is a university from England called uh, Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. Um, and then there's some Chinese institutions, some institutions from Korea and Singapore. Um, so it's a really unique community of people from all over the world. Uh, the China Institute has about 20 corporate partners, and we're still adding more, so I'll explain what that's about shortly. Uh, in terms of the actual facility, it's quite large. It's five floors, um, and it's all brand new, so it's state-of-the-art. There's lab spaces for different courses, uh, especially science and engineering, project spaces, team rooms, conference rooms, offices. Um, it's pretty well thought out as well. We also have an American Culture Center. Uh, which is only one of 20 in the country, but ours is the only one that's hosted um, exclusively by an American institution. Um, so that's just over a couple years old now, but we do a lot of outreach to the community for intercultural dialogue. And then we've also opened an Office of Student Life to make sure that our students are uh, being successful uh, while they're studying abroad, because studying abroad can be a huge challenge sometimes. So in terms of the programs we offer, um, our semester programs run during the fall and the spring. They're about 14 weeks, so in some cases they might be a little bit shorter than a semester at your home institution. So our fall program runs from August to November, um, and you get home right before Thanksgiving. And then during the spring, they run from mid-January to late April. Um, so in some cases, you might even get home a little early for summer. There's one to two midterm breaks per semester program. You can earn 12 to 18 credit hours, and you earn University of Dayton credits. So that's from an American school because we're located in Dayton, Ohio. Um, so the credit transfer process is really a lot easier than it would be if you were to study at a foreign institution. There's also opportunities for experiential learning, um, which is kind of like job shadow, as well as corporate site visits, which, is, um, which are organized through our partner uh, companies. So that'll be really unique as well because it gives you a first-hand look about what things like business um, and industry and just working in a foreign environment look like. And then, of course, there's also cultural tours and excursions all across the country. So, of course, you'll have to do things like see the Great Wall in Shanghai. Um, but then there's also different kinds of um, excursions to lesser-known places in China. So you really do see uh, quite a, a diverse part of the country as well, too, and places you might not really know about or see in pictures or things like that. 
the great thing about studying at the China Institute is all the courses are taught in English. So if you don't speak any Chinese, that is more than okay. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn some as well. And then we also offer courses in arts, um, so that includes liberal arts, business, engineering, humanities courses, courses uh, natural sciences, and then social sciences too. So we always post our courses on our website so you can see um, what exactly the courses are and how they might fit in with your degree plan or your major at your home institution as well. So that's a lot to take in in a very short amount of time. So why even study at the China Institute? So we've been really thoughtful about how we um, market and price our programs. So we've decided that they should be all inclusive. So the program cost you pay includes um, 12 to 18 credit hours of tuition, the airfare, which includes domestic connections since people come from all over the country to leave t for China, um, your Chinese student visa, which uh, you'll have to have in order to get into the country, um, housing, meals, program transportation, and tours and excursions. So the only out-of-pocket costs to students um, are, would be to get a passport if you don't have one already, and things like textbooks and any personal expenses you have. Um, but other than that, everything's included. Our programs are open to all majors and academic years, um, so you are all welcome. In terms of, uh, as I mentioned before, um, the cre transfer credit process is really easy as well for your home institution to make sure the credits get back to you and count towards your degree. You'll see different corporate site visits. You'll go on so many different tours and excursions that allow you to see culture and history and just Chinese society. And then since SIP, uh, or Suzhou Industrial Park, is an international community, it gives you the opportunity to meet people from all over the world. Um, they were really intentional when they were designing SIP. So there's a lot of different Western comforts uh, mixed in with some traditional Chinese hospitality. For example, there's an American district in Suzhou Industrial Park. There's a really great restaurant where you can get American-style breakfast as well that I, I frequent occasionally when I'm there. Um, so it is a great area to learn and live, especially in a place that can be uh, really different like China. Um, it's not as familiar as a place as maybe studying in Western Europe, but it gives you some of the comforts of home while you get to explore this really new and unique culture as well. So the application process for our programs is quite easy as well. To apply, you'll go to our website, where you'll see the link there. And on our website, you can view different things like videos, photos, blogs, um, program-specific information, such as dates and the course listing. And then when you decide which program you'd like to apply for, there's a section on our website called Become, and then there's a link that says apply now in the student section of the become area of our website. So you'll create a username and password for the application. There's no fee for that as well, and it's non-committal, so if something changes, that's okay. You'll complete all the fields in the application and click submit. It usually takes students about five to 10, sometimes 15 minutes, so it's not too complicated, thankfully. And then after you submit your application, you'll get a confirmation email, and then uh, you'll also get a preliminary acceptance to the program because after you get that, then you'll submit a copy of your official transcript from your home institution. So once you receive transcripts, then we will issue you a final admission decision. And then after uh, we receive your transcripts, you just have to wait for that final admission decision. It typically takes about 48-ish hours to get your admission decision sometimes a little bit less or a little bit more, but usually not much more than two days. And then the last step of the application process is to submit a $200 deposit to confirm your enrollment, and that deposit goes towards the program cost, so it is not an additional fee. Um, it'll go right there uh, towards your, your fees for the program. This is what the application portal looks like. So when you um, click on the Apply Now link that I mentioned before, you'll click up here in the first time user area to create a username and password. And then from there, you'll um, enter your email address and the password that you would like to use. And then you can go ahead and apply by entering your username and password here, click login, and then you'll be able to complete the application as well. So fortunately, the process is pretty easy and straightforward, but if at any time you were to have questions on filling out the application or if something got entered incorrectly, you can always send us an email and we're happy to help you through the process as well. 
So, um, in terms of application deadlines, the application deadline for the China Institute program is March 15th. I believe that's a Wednesday. So it's still a couple months away, and that's for our fall program. So there's definitely plenty of time to look into studying abroad at the China Institute during the fall. And then with regard to the Diversity Abroad China Institute Scholarship, that application deadline isn't until March 31st. So that gives you plenty of time to submit your application as well for that. And please note that there are two different applications that you'll complete. Um, both are free and relatively straightforward. Um, but just keep in mind that they are two different ones. So you'll have to apply for the program and then for the scholarship separately as well. So what I'll do is I'll turn it over to Trixie again to talk a little bit more uh, in depth about the scholarship opportunity as well. Thanks, Sean. <clears throat> so yes, as Sean mentioned, we are asking for two separate applications. To reiterate, you submit your application for the China Institute program first. And then after that, you are welcome to apply for the scholarship that we offer. So what kind of scholarship do we have available? Well, as we mentioned, and hopefully the reason that you're here, is because you know that we have nine $20,000 scholarships for fall 2017 semester. Um, I, as Sean mentioned, the application deadline for this scholarship is March 31st, but our applications don't officially open until February 1st. So that's two weeks from today. So as Sean also mentioned about his own program, if this is something that you are interested in, you have plenty of time between today and both March 15th for the program and March 31st for the application for their scholarship to consider if this is something that you are excited and ready to, to pursue. Um, what we asked for within the application, it's pretty simple. Your diversityabroad.com username so that we know you are a member of our free online student community. Uh, we ask for three short essay questions, and then we also ask for a copy of your China Institute program acceptance letter. So as I mentioned, because we are asking for you to apply to the program first, we want you to share with us uh, the letter that you received to confirm that you are enrolled or that you've accepted and or that you were accepted rather into the program. Um, once you submit your application, if you happen to apply towards, you know, let's say you applied for the scholarship at the very, very end on March 31st, um, you're, and you did, you applied really late for the program as well, um, you still can upload a temporary, uh, letter that, that Sean can issue to you in case you're cutting it close to the, to the deadline for submissions. So there's always ways that we can work around to make sure that you submit as full an application as necessary in order to uh, make sure that your application to the scholarship is complete. Um, what we're looking for for applicants is that you are currently enrolled at a, at a U.S. institution, that you have at least a 2.5 cumulative GPA, and it doesn't matter what scholarship uh, that, I mean, sorry, it doesn't matter what major that you are studying in your institution, all majors are accepted to the program. So what does that 20,000, I'm sorry, what does the program cost include, right? The $20,000 scholarships, and that accounts for 12 to 18 hour credit hours of tuition, which it can be a full, again, a full semester. So we don't want you to think that because you're studying abroad in China Institute or studying abroad, studying abroad in general, that you are delaying your graduation. The plan is that if you take courses through the University of Dayton China Institute, that this basically substitutes a semester that you would just otherwise take at your home school. So this will definitely keep you on track to graduate um, at your optimal time. The program costs also includes airfare. So like Sean mentioned, that includes domestic transfers as well. So if you have to fly to the closest airport, which is in another state, to then fly to China, all of those program costs um, include that airfare as well. Um, the China Institute requires, or any studying abroad in China, requires a visa. So the program costs include that as well, as well as the housing, all of your meals, your program transportation, um, pre-departure support and resources, as well as any tours and excursions that are planned as part of your program. So that includes visits to Shanghai, the Forbidden City, the Great Wall, 
obviously, as students in China, we want you to experience some of the most historical sites in that country. And so those are all included as part of your experience in the China Institute. So if you are selected as one of our nine $20,000 scholarship recipients, what does that include? That includes, of course, the scholarship credit towards the overall program cost. That also includes identity-specific pre-departure orientation and support from Diversity Abroad and the China Institute. So if you are a student from a diverse background, um, you may have very, very different experiences in China uh, based on your ethnic identity, based on your gender, based on your religion. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different factors that influence how we are perceived or how our experiences are in country. And this is absolutely no cause for concern. But having said that, we have the resources to prepare you for any questions that you might have that may pertain to how your identity impacts that experience. So that's sort of our specialty at Diversity Abroad. And what you get as a scholarship recipient is additional support to make sure that you feel as informed and prepared as possible before you uh, go to go on your experience through the China Institute. Uh, related to that, we also provide additional mid-semester check-ins. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll provide times to connect back with us and our staff to make sure that you are acclimating well to your new environment, to make sure that you feel supported by in-country staff, and that any concerns or questions that you might have, especially as it pertains to how your identity is impacting your experience, uh, go answer it. Um, so we definitely want you to know that you have additional support from our team as part of this scholarship. Uh, you'll receive a complimentary registration to our students conference that we host every year called the Annual Global Student Leadership Summit. So the Global Student Leadership Summit is a unique opportunity that we offer to students who have studied abroad and are returning to uh, the United States, um, you know, there's a lot that you experience if you go to another country. You experience all kinds of culture shock and you become a little bit more mindful of global politics and the world around you. And so we decided to create this student, uh, this student conference so that you have the opportunity not just to process your experiences abroad, but to also consider how that now informs your future career goals, how do you translate your experiences abroad to a job interview or within a resume or cover letter, um, and to even allow you to have the opportunity to network with other like-minded students and professionals in the field. So if you happen to catch the, the travel bug by studying abroad and you're looking for additional ways to, to either go back to China or experience something brand new in another country, this is absolutely a wonderful place for you to do that. Um, you'll have direct access to people that represent these organizations, and you'll have plenty of time to get to know other students across the United States who have had shared similar experiences as you have. So that's also included in your scholarship award as well. So I'm going, ahead and I'm going to share the conference information with you in your chat box. Um, finally, you can also be a, co a featured contributor on our website, so diversityabroad.com is really an online community where we encourage you as students to share your stories, to interact with one another, to use the resources that we have available to keep you informed about what the experience is like for others. So as a scholarship recipient, you'll have the opportunity to write articles or to share directly your experience with our audiences. I mean, it's a great way to not only gain exposure and and showcase maybe for future career or graduate school applications um, that you had an online presence in our community. But it's also really helpful because many students oftentimes rely on hearing from those who've directly experienced the study abroad um, to inform whether or not it's something that they want to pursue. So you really have the opportunity to almost be an ambassador and reflect um, what it was like to be a scholarship recipient and what this experience can be for others who hopefully will pursue similar opportunities abroad. So 
I would like to clarify that even though $20,000 is a huge amount and covers the majority of your program costs, it, this is still not a full scholarship to the China Institute. So you will still be um, required to pay for the remainder of the program costs, which adds up to $10,000, a little over $10,000. So I know that that sounds like a big number, and it is a big number, but I do want to emphasize that there are still many ways to find the additional funding and to secure additional funding to make sure that you can afford to go on this program. And I just also want to emphasize that it is still very much feasible given the different ways you can secure that funding. We absolutely don't want you to think that studying abroad is not for you because it's just not financially feasible. Uh, we understand completely that it is a very expensive experience, but we have so many ways that we can help you to identify other places to find financial support. Um, so we're going to go into answering your million dollar question, which is how do you pay for the rest of the program? So we're going to hop into some of our funding tips. Uh, before I jump into this list, I do also want to remind you all that you have the opportunity, if you'd like, to write your questions. So if you're watching this and you're having questions, uh, feel free to type them in the question box. Um, we'll be, make sure to answer some of your questions towards the end of the webinar, and we'll be sure to answer everyone's question um, before we sign off. So that said, um, how else can you pay for this program? There are plenty of scholarships that exist within study abroad and so many of them that are available to you. Hopefully some of these are new to you or if you've never heard of them, we're excited to be able to share them with you. Um, and we're absolutely available to answer any of your questions that you might have about some of these. So the first that we recommend, and this is a general rule for any scholarship or any program that you wanna pursue abroad, which is to check with your existing financial aid package. So if you receive funding and if you completed the FAFSA for your college program, just check with your financial aid advisor to see what of your financial aid um, award, which of your financial aid awards can travel with you on a study abroad program. That is a question that varies by institution. So there isn't one general rule for who can bring um, some of their scholarship money with them to study abroad. I've seen examples of schools where all of their funding can go with them to study abroad, but I've also seen examples where they limit certain grants and loans that you receive to studying abroad um, in another country. So really, you just have to kind of do some homework, double check your award letter and create or make an appointment rather with a financial aid advisor at your school and just walk through your letter with them to see how much money you can take with you to study abroad. Once you've done that and, you've, and you realize how much of the $10,000 or so that your financial aid can, can cover, there are still plenty of scholarships that you can apply for. Um, the Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship is a state-funded scholarship, and it's awarded to anyone who receives the, the Pell Grant. So if you're not sure if you are a Pell Grant recipient, you can go ahead and, again, check your financial aid package. Usually that indicates to you um, if you get it or not. So Pell Grant recipients, is that's the baseline requirement for applying for the Gilman. So you can only apply to that um, if you do receive the Pell Grants. And that is a $5,000 scholarship. Um, because China Institute is uh, in China, and because Chinese is considered a, <coughs> ooh, excuse you, <laughs> is a, a, what's the term I'm looking for? I just had a blank. But you could, there's a possibility for you to earn another $3,000 because it's what they call a critical language. Um, so that could be up to $8,000, um, but that would be something that you know they would dictate. Um, but baseline, you could earn $5,000. Uh, the Freeman Asia Award is now open as well, and that you can also earn up to $5,000 to study abroad um, in Asia. So China Institute is definitely qualified for that. Uh, the Fund for Education Abroad gives scholarships to students from underrepresented backgrounds. Um, I'm not sure if their application deadline has passed. It might have just passed. But if you decide you do want to pursue studying abroad, um, maybe this fall feels a little too soon. We will offer the scholarship for fall and spring semesters. And there's always opportunities to still find ways um, 
to use the Fund for Education Abroad Scholarship Fund in the future. At Diversity Abroad, we have something called our Overseas Ambassadors Program. It's $500, uh, but you have the opportunity to represent your, your organization or your, your institution and our, our organization um, from wherever you are in the world. So that's a great way to gain um, some visibility to show that you are a diverse student who has successfully been able to study abroad. And we try to give you some support um, while you're overseas during your program. Um, the last one I'll mention is the Diversity Abroad Planning Scholarship. So the, the scholarship for fall 2017 has already closed, but we will reopen that scholarship this fall for fall 2018. So again, if you're feeling like fall 2017 might be a little too soon or you're a little concerned that that's coming up closer than you are prepared for, that's totally fine. The planning scholarship, what we do is we award you that $1,500 and we provide you additional support to walk you through the application process. So if you feel like you just need a little bit more help, we are happy to offer that scholarship opportunity. Um, and that last link is the U.S. Study Abroad Scholarships and Grants List. Essentially, this is something that uh, is available on the State Department site, and it has even more scholarships that you can apply for. So, you know, be creative about where and how you can find funding sources. Um, but these are, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what those creative solutions are. But I just wanted to emphasize that these are some big, big number of scholarships uh, that you can, can definitely consider applying to. Yeah, and then um, just to add the bottom there, you'll probably see it bolded and unlined, but um, the China Institute um, and Diversity Abroad are really committed to making this work for students as well. So for those students who don't receive a $20,000 China Institute Diversity Abroad Scholarship, um, the China Institute will automatically consider those students for up to $15,000 in scholarships to spend a semester at the China Institute. So the scholarship range there can be anywhere from $3,000 to $15,000. So there's definitely still a way to, um, if this is something that you feel is right for you, um, there's definitely still a way to, to make this work as well. Excellent. So we mentioned earlier that there are plenty of unique ways to find the additional funding support that you might need to come up with the remainder program costs. Um, so one of those uh, recommendations that we have is fundraising and crowdsourcing. So if you are familiar with this, um, there are sites such as GoFundMe or Fund My Travel, and they make it really easy for friends and family and your larger network to donate uh, to your study abroad experience. I've seen students successfully fundraise thousands of dollars, um, and a lot of it just has to do with being very transparent and open about how unique this experience is. This experience is. Um, if you don't know, I think the average percentage of college students that study abroad is extremely low. Le I would say 2% or less. Um, and I'm happy to share some of those resources with you if you'd like to see how it could be that low. But it really is that it really is a unique opportunity. And not a lot of students that are current college students take advantage of this. So if you decide to do fundraising or crowdsourcing, you know, be very intentional about how you explain how this opportunity is not something that many students are, are pursuing and, you know, how their financial support will really help make this a reality for you. Um, in part of doing the fundraising, don't forget to reach back out to your communities at home. If you were part of, if you have community at your church, if you played uh, soccer as a kid, if you had that music teacher from your elementary or middle or high school, they all want to see your success as well. And I think you'd be surprised how invested they would be in helping you see this come true. So don't forget to reach out to those old networks as well and, and let them know, you know what, your, what kind of financial support will help you to do when you uh, go on a program like the China Institute. Um, writing old-fashioned letters or even emails to family members also helps. Um, really, don't limit yourself to who you might ask. You really don't know, <laughs> and it will really surprise you sometimes who um, will donate what they can to help you um, go abroad. 
and be very specific and personal about this experience, um, especially if you are a student who has never been out of the country or maybe you've never even been on a plane. This is a huge leap of faith that you're taking, and I think everyone will be excited to see that and to support you in that. So, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, we also want to emphasize, you know, good old fashioned working and saving up. So, if you are listening on this webinar and you know now that you would really want to make this happen either by this fall or even by early next spring, you can start planning now. Um, start budgeting. Start working and creating and sa uh, you know a savings that you can come back to and set goals to to save up a certain amount by a certain uh, time frame. Um, creating a budget and sticking to it is one of the challenges that every adult, young adult or old, uh, struggles with. Um, but I think being able to understand where and how your finances are spent will make you much more conscious of of how you can save um, towards this program. So those are just a couple of tips that we have um, in order for you to come up with other ways of securing the additional program costs of going on the China Institute program. So in anticipation of you submitting your application to the China Institute Diversity Abroad Scholarship, I just wanted to share with you a couple of scholarship writing tips that will help you to submit a really standout application. Um, we've read thousands of scholarship applications and it's great when the winners kind of emerge at the top because they stand out to you for good reasons. So here are a couple of tips that we have as you pursue your scholarship application um, to our program or to any of those that we previously mentioned, the Gilman, all of these scholarship um, applications ask for essay questions um, and you really want to make sure that you are memorable and that your application stands out. So some of our tips include making sure to review the purpose, not just the purpose of the scholarship, but the purpose of the program for which you are applying. So in this case, it would be the China Institute. Um, be clear about telling your story, right? Who are you and how? what are your goals and why should this award go to you? Um, know your audience. If you are applying to a scholarship with us at Diversity Abroad, understand what our mission is and the work that we do and try to draw those connections, right? Um, so when you're writing your scholarship uh, essays, consider not just answering the question, but making those connections um, back to the work that we do and the work that is done at the China Institute. Uh, be program specific. Um, a lot of these scholarship essays, at their core, they do ask very similar questions about your goals, about your intentions, um, about how these funds can support you, but be program specific. Let us know that you are writing to our scholarships specifically and that you haven't just copied and pasted one big scholarship application from uh, a different program. It lets us know that you are taking your time, that you're thoughtful, um, and that you are applying to our program and our scholarship specifically. Um, I would also say try to avoid cliches and talking about travel. Um, of course, we want you to have this experience to gain um, a more global worldview. And in studying abroad, in gaining academic credits, um, of course, you have the opportunity to travel and see these great sites. But what most scholarship awards don't do is give you scholarships to go on vacation, right? So making sure that you even if that is something that you're looking forward to, be cautious of the wording and the phrasing that you're using so that it's clear that you aren't just asking for money so that you can travel all around China. Um, and then, of course, give thanks. Um, this is a unique opportunity. They only, some awards, they have very few numbers of them. So you want to make sure that you are thankful for the opportunity. Um, so hopefully some of those writing tips uh, were helpful. We are going to go into much more depth about scholarship writing tips and how to make your application an award-winning one um, at our next webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and put those details up on the screen. That's happening next Wednesday. I mean, not next Wednesday. <laughs> In about a month on Wednesday, February 15th um, at 11 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So at that 
at that webinar, we're going to review all the diversity abroad scholarships, give you additional tips for making your scholarship application stand out, and we'll also have some scholarship recipients and reviewers on the, on the webinar so that you can get tips from them directly as well. So I'm going to go and share the registration link with all of you so that you can be sure to sign up for that if that's something that you might be interested in doing and joining us um, in, the, in the next month. So in terms of next steps, now that you are familiar with the China Institute, now that you know a little bit more about where it's located in China, um, about how what the costs of the scholarship includes, what to what to look forward to in the application for both. Um, here's what we suggest as your next steps um, after this webinar. So number one, research the China Institute program. We've provided links um, and we hope that you take some time to see if this really is something that you are interested in. Um, I think Sean made a great explanation about you know being in China, but then being part of the space that they're in in the park where you can have access to some more Western amenities that will help that transition. Um, so, you know, I think that that's a great, a great mix of cultures that you can have. Um, and I think that that's what makes the China Institute experience a unique one. So really discover, read about it and see if it's something that you want to pursue. And then once you, you decide that it's the program for you, Make an appointment with your study abroad advisor or with your academic advisor. Um, both of them will help you to ensure that the, the, the classes that you want to take at the China Institute will transfer and be applied towards your degree program. So I also want to just emphasize they're not going to sign off and allow you to take certain courses unless it will be applied towards your overall degree program. So don't feel like you're going to do courses that are completely unnecessary and, again, will, make, will prolong your graduation or won't apply towards your degree. Everybody at the China Institute and at your school wants to see those transfers go through successfully or those transfer credits go through successfully, and they'll help you to establish that um, during that meeting. Once you've done that, be mindful that the application for the China Institute program for the fall is on March 15th. So we gave you some of those links as well. Make sure you will read through that application. You, you can always come back in and make sure to have a complete, a complete submitted application um, before it's due on March 15th. And, and be mindful, again, that we want you to apply for that before you apply for the Diversity Abroad China Institute Scholarship, which closes on March 31st. Um, so again, you'll be able to log into that. You can come back to your application. You don't have to fill it out in one seating. So if you need some time to write your essays more thoughtfully and then come back in and copy and paste them from Microsoft into, into the application portal, you're absolutely welcome to do that. Um, and then, of course, start saving up or start checking out some of those other scholarship links that we shared with you. Um, there are so many opportunities for you to secure additional funding. And if you're really committed and you really want to make this happen and you think you would be a great fit for some of the scholarships that are available, you can absolutely apply to all of them if you wanted to, if you have them, if you have the time and if you're really committed. So we absolutely encourage that. And if you happen to get scholarships that add up to more than the $10,000, um, you know, it's not like you can't keep that difference. So if you happen to raise a collectively $15,000, for example, in scholarship money, in your financial aid package, and through fundraising or crowdsourcing, you get to use that difference um, of $5,000 um, to apply towards anything else in the program. If it's additional food or souvenirs or the books and the passport that Sean was referring to, um, there's a lot of different different ways um, for you to still use that funding for the program. Um, and then last but not least, of course, is to prepare for your adventure abroad. Um, studying abroad is exciting and it's fun. And you get to be with other students who, like you, are eager and excited to try something new. And for the year 2017, you know, if you haven't set a New Year's goal or a resolution yet, I think going abroad and going to another country um, to experience study abroad specifically is going to be a great option for you. So we hope 
that you decide to do that um, and, and you to decide to do that with the China Institute. So before we dive into your questions, I wanted to mention one thing that I totally forgot to mention earlier, which is if you look in the control panel window area of your webinar um, system, you'll see a little thing that says handouts. And what that is is in there you'll see a handout for um, something new that the China Institute, is, China Institute is doing for this fall program. Um, I'm just going to briefly mention it, and more information is on our website as well. But we're offering a minor in one semester. So what that means is you will take a 12 credit hour minor in studies and design and entrepreneurship. Um, you'll take cor a course in philosophy, sociology, um, design, and then one in business um, specific to entrepreneurship. So it's a great interdisciplinary minor that makes the most of your time in China. And then it will also be transcripted by the University of Dayton. So what you'll receive at the end of your program, regardless, is a University of Dayton transcript. But if you complete that 12 credit hour minor, um, you'll also have that on your transcript as well, which will be great for you to put on uh, things like your resume or in a cover letter or just something to talk about in an internship or job interview. And um, again, more information on that is on our website as well, which we'll show here in just a few minutes, the link there. Um, and I also shared it in the chat box. But I wanted to mention that as well because um, there's no additional cost to do that um, as well. And it's, it just adds value to your um, education abroad experience. Um, so what questions do you have for Trixie and I? Yes. And I would mention as well, I'm happy to answer scholarship questions, general diversity abroad questions, and then any of your questions that are specific to the China Institute or the experience in China. Um, Sean will be able to answer some of those questions as well. So we welcome your questions and we'll give you guys a minute or so um, to submit your questions to us. Excellent. So I think we have a question. Um, I'm trying to understand the $10,000 outstanding fee. Is that tuition costs? That's a good question. Sean, do you want to maybe clarify the $10,000 program outstanding fee and how that relates to the scholarship slash the overall program costs? Sure. Yeah, no problem. So the as we mentioned before, the total program cost includes all the different things that we had on the screen previously from tuition to airfare and things like that. So the actual total sticker price of the program that nobody actually pays is about $30,000. So after the scholarship, um, the leftover program cost is that $10,000 balance. So what it includes is it applies to all the different things that we had listed on the screen before. So we don't actually break down the program cost. So there isn't a charge for tuition, and there isn't a charge for this, and there isn't a charge for that. It's actually just one total program cost. So it includes um, all the things listed before. I know in some study abroad programs and some institutions, it might be that they, um, what they call line item costs. So you might have a cost for your tuition and you might have a cost for your housing and then a cost for your meal plan. We just roll it all into one to make it a little bit easier um, to, to build to students. Um, so that's where the, the remaining cost difference comes from. Excellent, thanks Sean. We actually have another question that says, are there any language immersion programs available? That's also a really good question. So during the semester programs, we offer a language and culture course. It's actually mandatory as well, because that way um, students have the opportunity to learn a little bit of the language and a little bit of the culture as well. It's also required for um, study a uh, student visa uh, requirements as well. Other than that, we don't have a full language immersion opportunity at the moment, um, but that is something that we're trying to hope to de develop in the next couple of years as well. But at the moment, um, all of our coursework is in English, but for students who have ever taken Chinese or Mandarin um, in high school or are taking it in college now, there are plenty of opportunities um, to continue your language skills. 
Additionally, for students who are very specifically interested in um, perhaps doing more advanced language um, learning, there's different opportunities for private tutoring or to take a class at a different partner institution. Um, so if that's something that you would be really interested in, um, we'd be happy to see on our end what options are available to you as well. Excellent. Thanks, Sean. I don't, I haven't received any additional questions, but we'll keep that up in case some of you do come up with questions. Again, anything pertaining to our scholarship or the program in China are welcome. Um, in the meantime, I'm sending to you all the link to the Diversity Abroad and China Institute Scholarship page. Um, again, the application isn't open until February 1st, so you have some time to contemplate, think about, you know, if you want to submit an application to the program and then consider submitting an application to the scholarship, which is completely separate again. So I just wanted to put that there so you all can refer to that um, when it's the time to apply for your scholarship. And I'm also going to send everyone the direct link to the China Institute scholarship page. Um, it's also available on our website, as I mentioned before, but it can be kind of hard to find sometimes. So I want to make sure it's available for everyone as well. Again, both of these applications are free, so um, it's, it's nothing to be too concerned about as well. And then if for some reason something changes and you, you've applied for a China Institute program and then it turns out you're not able to go, or you need to change to a different term, that's okay too. And we're happy to work with you on that as well. Excellent. I think those are all the questions that we received. So thank you all for, for joining us for this uh, information session. We hope it's been really helpful for you to learn more about our opportunities at Diversity Abroad and the program in, at the China Institute specifically. So here are a couple of ways where you can find us with diversityabroad.com. You can also, um, we hope that you join our online, our online community. Again, it's free. And we hope that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook so that you can get the latest updates from us. And then with the China Institute, um, you, can act, you can send an email and also um, click on the website for more information. And then the last slide, um, where and how you can reach the two of us. I'm available to answer any of your scholarship-specific questions, and Sean is also available to answer any of your program-specific questions uh, pertaining to the China Institute. So with that, um, we want to thank you so much again for joining us. We hope this has been uh, really helpful and informative, and we look forward to seeing some of your program applications for both the program and the scholarship to be submitted. Thank you guys so thank much for being here. Much,